Hello everybody and welcome to Vigilant Citizen. My name is Josh. I am not outside today because it's a little chilly out there. It's not too bad, but I'm worried about the wind. It's been really windy out here. I have a flag out front and I've, I've had to pull it out a couple times over the last couple days just so it doesn't get whipped around and get pulled out of its post or anything. So, and it's getting cold, even though it's not too bad. I, I'm, I'm tired of feeling cold. So I'm going to try it in here. Uh, this room is a little bit bigger, it's pretty open, and there's not that many things on the walls quite yet, so there might be a little bit of an echo, but we'll see how the sound does. Um, I can always go back into my car, right? Now it'll be in the garage, no wind or anything there. <laughs> my studio. <laughs> um, first and foremost, before we get into today's topic, um, I did want to share with you something born out of a comment made by Bill, who suggested that we have a... Vigilant Citizen Funko Pop. Um, obviously, I can't announce that we have one made for this uh, holiday season, but if we did, it would look something like this, I imagine. So, there you go. Get a little laugh out of that. Um, I asked my wife to draw this for me. She's a pretty good artist, and uh, yeah, I think it looks just like me, right? And that's exactly my look, kind of mug right there. So maybe we'll commission the company that makes Funko Pops to make one of these. What do you think? It can be a special edition. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. Maybe I'm going to, um, maybe I'll, I'll uh, uh, frame it and put it up behind me for every single video from here on out. So uh, thanks for that, Bill. That's, that's on you, buddy. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. I was saying something about um, being overly materialistic or something and talking about somebody who collected a bunch of them and, and it was kind of silly and, and you said that, hey, this would be something that I should have. So anyway, uh, there you go. There's a laugh for you. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about something that that's obviously, I don't want to get too in, into details about my own personal experiences or, or experiences of friends or family, but there's a there's a pervasive issue that a lot of people are being confronted with today. Evil is at their doorstep. It's at our doorstep. And I really wanted to call upon those of you who are watching this just to, to think really hard about what your principles and what your values are. And it really anchor to those, really use those as a solid system and a, a solid framework of how to live your life. One of the main reasons being, obviously it helps you guide your decisions through life, but one of the big reasons is because it helps you know how to confront the enemy when you're faced by him, right? So, for example, if, you, <laughs> if you're not sure how you would respond or how you would react when, a, um, when your company decides to force a medical experiment on you, um, as a condition of employment, you might want to start thinking about something like that right now before it happens to you. Maybe something like that already has, hypothetically, right? But maybe you want to start thinking about something like that now and what you would do and the steps you would take and where's your line in the sand, right? That's the big thing. What's your line in the sand? What are you willing to tolerate and what are you not willing to tolerate? You know, you don't want to give up your principles. You don't want to betray your values. Murphy, get over here. I've got my dad's dog here today, and he's a little dachshund. <laughs> my dad went through some surgery, so I'm watching him, and he likes to just kind of kind of be whiny. So if you hear a little bit of barking, it's him begging for attention. So come here, buddy. So my line in the sand is not letting little dogs dictate to me what I should be doing with my time. So yeah, go lay down. <laughs> but just as a, as a small example there, right? No, but, but that is a kind of a, a good little metaphor is like he's a little dog and I'm the human, I'm in charge, and I'm not going to tolerate him barking at me just because he wants attention or, or thinks that he needs attention. I am going to stand my ground and... Sure, I will yield on some things, like I know that he needs attention in certain ways, um, but if I leave the room and he starts barking at me, that's, that's inappropriate behavior, right? So I'm not going to give in 
and do what he wants just because he has the energy and the audacity to bark at me. I love the little guy. And Dad, if you're watching, he's being very well taken care of, and you know that. Um, but there are some things that I just don't tolerate in my household. <laughs> Dogs don't run the show here. <laughs> they might in other households. Not my dad's. Um, but he's, he's a good little boy. But that's a good little metaphor, right? He's, he's important in my life. And I'm going to do my best to take care of him. But he's not going to run the show. There are lines that he's not allowed to cross while he's visiting here. The same should go for if you're at church or you're at work. What, what are the conditions in which you want to continue being a member of your church or continue um, being employed at your, at your job? And what are the things that would make you not want to be there anymore? What, what things are not worth the money? What's your price, right? And everybody has one. <laughs> and at some point, it can't be just about the money. You have to be doing something greater than just making a paycheck and you can't be sacrificing your principles or your values just to make a paycheck. So where's your line in the sand? What will it take for you to say, nope, I'm out. You, you could pay me a million dollars, but I'm out. Or, or do, you, do you not have that line? Are you willing to do anything for a million dollars? If, if that's the case, then your only principles and your only values are around um, the collection or the um, earning of cash and material wealth. And I don't personally think that that's a wise principle or value to structure your your worldview or your, your framework of life around. I think you need to have something a little bit more solid than that. And if you're just... If you're not sure about that and you're only in it for the money, you're not going to stand for anything. And as the old adage goes, those who don't stand for anything will fall for, if, those who don't stand for something will fall for anything. So really think about what would drive you to leave your job or organization that, that you're affiliated with or even your friends group or something like that. The old adage goes, you know, my mom used to say, if your friends all jumped off a bridge, would you jump off as well? Um, I think we're seeing a time in our country and in the entire world that we're finding out those people who would jump off of a bridge um, and those who wouldn't. And at some point you have to decide that it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks of me. Murphy, stop that. <laughs> These are my principles. These are my values. I'm not for sale and these aren't for sale, and this is my line, I'm never crossing it, and nobody can ever make me cross it, and that's that. Start thinking about that. You don't want to have to make that decision when you're confronted with it. You want to be ready, you want to be mentally prepared. I've had some, um, some firearms training courses, and this is one thing that they, that, that they talk about, is if you're confronted with a situation in the real world, you don't want to you don't want to make a decision in that moment. You want to have made a decision about if you're going to engage in a potentially volatile or hostile or violent situation beforehand. You want to think about if you walk into the corner store and it's being held up at gunpoint, what do you do? Are you the type of person who's going to try to intervene at great personal risk and bodily harm? Or are you going to step back and call the police? Either one's fine, but you need to make sure you understand the laws, you understand your principles, you understand your values, you understand the potential outcomes, <laughs> and you're willing to, um, and, and you're ready to act instead of having to decide in that moment. The same goes for things like this, if you're being asked to do certain things at work. Um, the time to think about it and make a decision is now, before you're, you're forced into a decision. What are you willing to do? And what are you willing to, to, what are you not willing to do? What are you willing to lose your job, your career, your house for? Because if you don't have an answer to that, it, things are going to be painful. And you will lose them in a way that you didn't want or in a way that you didn't expect. I hope not. I'm not saying that that's a 100% a accurate prediction for everybody. I'm just saying that if you don't decide now what is worth losing your job, your livelihood, your career, your house, and, and 
going and starting over, then you will probably be confronted with something and it will be much harder to make that decision when the time comes than if you've thought about it previously. So anyway, I'm starting to ramble a little bit and I'm also really tired. I had to get up really early for work for some uh, maintenance. I've been up since like, I don't know, 3.30 this morning. So <laughs> my my head isn't uh, exactly, I'm, there isn't exactly the same sort of clarity in my head that maybe I always have. Um, so maybe I should just go take a nap. So anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Think about what your, uh, what your line in the sand is and stand your ground. Stick to it. Know where it is and don't give in under any circumstance once you've got that identified. All right. Thanks everybody for your time. Always appreciate the conversation. Leave a comment below. Send me an email. You can find that in the description of the, the video below. And if you haven't checked out my uh, Rumble channel, go, go check that out. I have at least one video that uh, is on there that isn't on YouTube. And go check out my gaming channel. This is supposed to be my gaming room. And I would like to start opening it up to, to have people at this table and, and play some board games or something and maybe even put that up on the channel. That was kind of the original intent. Uh, I'll have to see how that works because I only have one camera and it's the one I'm using right here and it's also my phone. So uh, I'll have to figure out, I don't want to break the bank doing something like this, but it'll be a lot of fun. So um, we'll figure it out and stay tuned for that if you're into those kind of things. Anyway, thanks for your time, and I will catch you next time. Murphy.